Manny was an adventurous person. Uh, I would say in the short period of time that he lived, he, he lived a full life. Uh, he was a pilot, ski photographer. Did a lot of things in a short period of time. Manny Gomez was a very kind and caring person, always putting others before himself. Many worked at Fuji Bank on the 81st floor uh, South Tower of the World Trade Center. On the morning of 9-11, what I do remember, it was a blue, blue sky. It was a beautiful day, and I was on my way into work. And when I got to my building, at that time I worked on 23rd Street, I remember my doorman saying, a plane has hit the towers. And I said to him, Bobby, you're exaggerating. How could a plane hit the towers? He was known to exaggerate. He was an older man. When I went upstairs, my boss came running to me and said, come, come, look at what's going on. And I said, oh my God, my brother-in-law works there. So I right away called my husband, and he said, I know, I'm watching it right now. Call Manny, call Manny, make sure he's okay. I can't get through. So I called, and sure enough, I couldn't get through either. The phone was busy. So I dialed his wife, Lori, and she told me, I spoke to him, he's okay. You know, his tower wasn't hit, it was the other tower. He's okay. And I, she said, um, I told him to get out. So he said he was gonna get out. So I said, okay, I'm gonna keep trying because I wanna talk to him. But so many people were calling, I could never get through. The phone was just busy, busy, busy. And so I never got through to talk to Manny. My wife called me. She said there's something happening in the trade center. I didn't think much of it, being that uh, there was always something going on there. So I just said, just keep calling Manny and make sure everything's okay. And so uh, I went back to a, a filing room, the back area of the office. There was a TV back there, and I saw when uh, the, one of the towers was on flames. And as I kept looking, seconds later, the second plane came and hit the tower. That's when I realized that this was serious, and I, I just ran back to my office. I told my boss I was leaving. Everybody already knew what was going on. So I just left and ran to uh, downtown. I don't know, hoping to find them maybe. Uh, but that was useless, as we all know now. My husband called me. He said he was going to go find Manny. And he went out there to where the World Trade Center was. And it was crazy, people running everywhere. And he ended up at an office where I used to work at, a law firm. And that's when the South Tower came down. And he said he knew. He knew his brother was gone. Laurie is Manny's wife. Laurie wasn't dealing with it very well. She couldn't understand why he didn't get out. She did speak to him. Like I said before, he was in the 1993 bombing. And so she said, remember you were there, get out. He promised he would get out, but unfortunately he didn't because he was helping others. And she couldn't accept it. And she was really distraught and she just sobbed the whole time the whole time she sobbed. They found Manny's remains December, close to Christmas time, I would say about the 23rd around there. Uh, we were here having dinner and two detectives came knocking on the door. And to say the least, we were very nervous because we didn't know why we have two detectives at our door. And one of them said, uh, are you related to Manuel Gomez Jr.? And my husband said, yes. He said, we're here to tell you that we have found the remains of your brother. So we traveled to Puerto Rico, all of us, the whole family, took the portrait and his remains, and we transported it to Puerto Rico. Lori lived alone for about a year until she decided she was best living in Puerto Rico. So she moved out there. Uh, memorable things of many are so many, but I, the ones that always come to my mind is my sons, who is only nephews, Stephen and Michael. He always took the time to spend time with them and give them what they needed. And um, I remember he bought them their first pair of walking shoes from Buster Brown that I had them bronze as a memory. What I remember about Manny is uh, good times we had together, went skiing together, went bike riding together. Um, one time we went skiing and there wasn't much snow, mostly ice, <laughs> so I, I had a sore tushy. Riding bike. <laughs> yeah. He knew how to shift the bike, I didn't. He said, he told my cousin, don't worry, you'll get the hang of it. I sure it did after a while. <laughs> after my tongue was halfway down to the floor. <laughs>
One memorable story was when he took Stephen flying. He was a pilot and he had a little chopper and a Cherokee plane and he took him out and I was very afraid, but he took him and once he was up in the air, he called me and he said, Stephen's doing fine, don't be nervous. And I said, but if you're talking to me on the cell phone, what is Stephen doing? He says, he's flying the plane. And I was so afraid. But little did I know that Manny was an expert. He was a great pilot. And he, there was nothing to be afraid of because that's who Manny was. Manny's hobbies, he has so many. He loved to play golf. He loved to scuba dive. He loved to fly his Cherokee plane. He loved to ride a motorcycle. And two days before 9-11 happened, he came here. We had gone on a cruise and he came by to say hello. And he says, guess what I'm doing now? I'm going to jump out of a plane with a parachute. And I remember precisely saying, Manny, you are so crazy. And he said, you only live life once. But don't tell my mom I'm taking classes. Once I do it, I'll let her know. He was very close to his mom. And they took a lot of vacation time together. And even after he married, he always stayed in touch with his mom, visited her constantly in Puerto Rico, flew her in his plane to Virginia. And he, was, he had a very good, close relationship with her. So the fact that this happened to him has really, really changed the lives of everyone, but especially his mom. I just cope, I just move on. Uh, you know, the beginning, it was a sense of loss. When it first happened, you couldn't believe it, you're in shock. Um, you actually feel it, something. Something's missing, but uh, there's not much you can do. Just go on. You know, there's a there's a hope further down. So that's what you you hang on to.